And I assume that um, if you've got a, the sheet, uh, you should be able to access that from home. All right, let's go and try the next piece, okay? The next piece of Charles Davidson is from um, Shir Hashirim, The Song of Songs. And let's um, see if we can do it. Let's see what just happened to that email. Nope. Hold on. Now it's not even on here. So give me a minute. I apologize. Um, share. Why is it not there now? I should have had it. Um, you want to stop this? There. Yep. That's what I need. I need to stop completely. Now okay. we're back. Okay. So let's try the next piece, Anado D which is from, um, as I said, from Song of Songs. My beloved is, I'm my beloved and my beloved. Now I don't see them at all though. Can you guys see this okay? It's not, it's not sharing right now, Shaney. But I was wondering, yeah, we're not on share now. All right. Uh, all right. Kathy Stein, are you just able to sing some of it for us instead of going? Well, we're getting nothing from it. And if we heard you singing, at least we'd get something. that is the cantor on the left was David Berger. He's a reform cantor uh, in Chicago. I think he's actually at the synagogue. It was Janowski synagogue, right? A very talented guy. Uh, the cantor on the right, I don't know. Okay. So, all right. Now, Hush of Midnight is, I hope we get to hear this. Hush of Midnight is a very interesting work. It was written by Charles Davidson in the mid-1960s. And what this tells me is that already in the mid-1960s, we were having a hard time getting people to come to Slichot services, okay? 
And this is a very, especially for the mid 1960s, very creative work. Charles, as I mentioned before, was a real scholar of Mussoff. And what he does is he com combines a contemporary sound with Nussach. And if you know Nussach, you know that he's got the right Nussach in here. So this is a clip. I think it's just an audio clip. And hopefully it'll come out. At Amica, we provide you with something more than auto. That's home. Okay. Uh, 
it's a very interesting work. I'm sure that many cantors did it in their synagogues, especially in the 60s, the 70s, and the 80s. Okay, the next piece I hope we really get to hear. Um, this is from a, a jazz service that Charles wrote, and it's from a work called And David Sang Before the Lord. It's a very interesting piece. It's an Adon Olam set in jazz, melody and jazz rhythm. So let's see if that will pull up for us. What if you could do SEO smarter and faster? With Wix, you can edit your meta tags. The commercials always come through. I can make these different now if you want, if there's something to see here. Okay, this is just a vocal. So. Yeah, then I'm not going to go. very different. Um, and, um, you know, Charles wrote in many different styles. I've got some gorgeous music from Friday night I used to do with my choir that, that very melodic things. Um, just really, is it, he's a real gentleman. He's a gem um, and just a, a very important figure in synagogue music. And as I said, for a number of years, he was the professor of Nusach in the Cantorial School at JTS, having succeeded the great um, Max Wolberg. Okay, let's, I'm hoping, now I wanna talk about Gerald Cohen, but I'm, I'm concerned that we're not gonna be able to get his pieces because of the technical difficulties that we've had. Let's start, let's see if we can hear either of these pieces, then I'll tell you a little bit about Charles. I hope you can hear this because still do every recipe, every book. this next piece still do is the web and still got it's emerged as really one of the most beautiful settings of the 23rd Psalm. Um, it's done now. He wrote it as a choral piece. Actually, he may have originally written it as a duet, but it's done by a number of cantors. They, it's done at funerals. It's done at Yisker services. Um, but this is a choral setting of this piece. And again, I hope it comes out. So. Nothing to cook. Looky how easy. It's a honey baked day with family meals in all kinds of sizes. Apologize. Try the next one. And um, again, please listen to this at home. Ajiro is a very talented composer, also on the faculty of the Cantorial School at JTS. I'm afraid this one will come. Won't come out. <laughs> 
It's going to work. So let's pause this. Let's pause this and we'll play this. This is from Casimir Concert 2019. So let me tell you a little bit about Gerald. He was born in New York City in 1960. He serves Congregation Sherry Tikva in Scarsdale, New York. He's on the faculty, as I mentioned, of Cantorial School at JTS. He holds degrees in music from Yale and Columbia. Gerald has been commissioned by numerous ensembles and his works have been performed by many, including the Pittsburgh Symphony. He's composed three operatic works, including Steel a Pencil for Me, based on a true love story that began in a World War II concentration camp, of course, during the show up. His best known piece, unfortunately, you're not going to hear, is the 23rd Psalm. And again, we're sharing um, my page with you. So after the fact, you can go and, and listen to these pieces that we're not able to hear. The conductor of this piece is my son, and Gerald Cohen oh, is at the oh. piano. <laughs> David Geffen Hall. Yes, in New York. Yeah. David Geffen Hall used to be called Alice Tully Hall. It's Lincoln Center. Okay. Lincoln Center. Okay. Um, so um, now we'll move on to our last composer, 
who happens to be my favorite composer of my lifetime, and that's Mayor Finkelstein. For my money, and if you don't know the name, you're going to know some of his music. For my money, I think that he has written some of the most beautiful music of, of my lifetime. Um, Mayer was born in Israel in 1951. His family emigrated to England when he was four years old after his father, Cantor Svi Finkelstein, accepted a position at one of London's premier congregations. Mayer soon joined his older brother, Arya, in accompanying her, their father at services, and the three of them went on to release a number of liturgical recordings. At 14, Mayer became the youngest cantor in Europe when he took his first professional post at his synagogue in Glasgow. He studied at the Royal College of Music in London and graduated with honors in singing, piano, and composition. He came to the United States in 1974 and accepted a position in suburban Chicago. I think it was, it was Will Met. In 1978, Mayer moved to Los Angeles and assumed the prestigious pulpit at Sinai Temple in Westwood, where he remained for 18 years. Uh, this is the same congregation that was served by Max Helfman who we talked about um, a couple weeks ago. And this is also the congregation where Rabbi David Wolpe just retired from. So it is, the, it is the conservative movement's flagship synagogue on the West Coast. It was during Mayer's time at Sinai that I think he did his most prolific composing. And I like to uh, describe Mayer's music as a combination, a beautiful blending of Hollywood and tradition. Uh, additionally, Mayer composed for television shows, including Dallas and Falcon Crest. In 1995, he premiered his symphonic choral work, Liberation, at the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion in Los Angeles. The work was composed to commemorate the liberation of the concentration camps after the Holocaust. Cantor Finkelstein is also known for his musical score to Steven Spielberg's television documentary, Survivors of the Shoah. Currently, Mayer serves as Kazan at Temple Emanuel in Palm Beach, Florida. So um, we're gonna start with his modim and which transitions into his very well-known Vialkula. And this is Mayer doing the singings. He's the Chazan Sons. Sometimes I just wanna run a bar and go, you know? I do know. And I think I can help you with that. Really?
but you decide. But it's stunningly beautiful. He was here maybe about six years ago for Cantor Shipman's Kazonis concert. Yeah. So he came for his concert? Yeah. He yeah. was one of the performers. Yeah. Yeah. And that I've and heard. Sure, of course. You know, um, yes. It is, he writes beautiful music. So now we're going to hear what, for me, was one of the most gorgeous settings of Birkana Chodesh, which is recited, as you know, once a month that I've ever heard. Um, this is sung in the next cut. It's sung by um, Cantor Mira Davis, who's a recent graduate of the Cantorial School at JTS, and she is the assistant cantor. Park Avenue Synagogue, and I was her advising her when she when she um, was graduating, and I said to her, and she just actually repeated in a concert in my honor. I said, "What are you doing? Stay at Park Avenue Synagogue. Don't even look." She had an offer from a large congregation in Minneapolis. I said, "You stay because now she succeeded Rachel Brooke, who went on Shea Emmett." And I said, "You stay at Park Avenue Synagogue for five years, and then, like Rachel, write your own ticket." So this is. Um, um, Cantor Mira Davis singing Mayor Finkelstein's Birkata Chodesh. Also a very, very beautiful piece. <laughs>
that's still far from shiny. That's scary. <laughs> that is scary. Yeah, <laughs> but but, not, but don't tell. But uh, Ozzy doesn't want to lose her. But I, I'll tell you, um, um, at Park Avenue Synagogue, I've seen the control room that they have. They've got six people working the control room on the Shabbos morning. Oh, wow. Every, everything is completely high tech. Um, so, so the question now that you should ask me is, okay, now what if you don't have instruments, okay? What are you gonna do? Can you do mayor's music? So the, my answer to you is yes, but you've got to have an awfully good choir because what you can do, and I did this for his Lador Vador for my choir in Akron, where I took the instrumental parts and I put them into the choral parts. So now you're gonna hear the same piece without instruments. It's Gideon Zellermeyer from Montreal with his, with his male choir. And you'll hear how, and again, his choir is obviously first rate because the, the, the harmonies are, are intricate, but how he took the, the harmonies from the accompaniment and now moved them into the choral parts. done during COVID.
magnificent composition with two excellent renditions. Mitch, had you heard this piece before? No, never heard it. It is, for my money, I think it's the most beautiful setting of Birkata Hodish I have ever heard. Mm. Okay, next piece, we've got two more pieces to listen to. The next piece is Barosh Hashanah, Barosh Hashanah Yikatev, Yom Tzom Tipur Yikatevun, from the uh, High Holiday Liturgy. The soloist on this piece is Mayer's Daughter. And this is recording from when he was in Houston. Another very gorgeous piece. I used to, when I did it with my choir, I used to have children singing the refrain. <laughs> All right, it's a stunningly beautiful piece. Listen to it at home. Yeah. I'm sorry that we can't play it for you. So the last piece that we're going to hear, um, I'm gonna skip, um, this should be okay because it's from the Milken Se Archive series. Um, this is his La Dorvador, um, maybe the most beautiful piece of synagogue music written in the last 50 years. It is sung in pretty much countless synagogues um, throughout the world. I know I did it with my choir when we do it on high holidays. People just waited for it. They just waited for it. We did it again at Nila. And uh, my choir sang on Shabbat Tov too. We do it then. But obviously, a lot of people only came for high holidays. Um, but I will tell you one story about this. I um, was coming back from the 1991 Cantor's Assembly Convention in Los Angeles. I took my family with me. My son was like six years old at the time, but I already knew at, the, at that point, he was already, you know, showed an immense musical talent. And I was on the plane on the way back and Mayer had performed at the convention and I bought a, a recording, it was a cassette at that time. <laughs> and I was listening to this piece on the way back and I was just absolutely hearing it for the first time. And I was dumbfounded. And I said to my son, I said, you have got to listen to this. Um, that's the first time I heard this piece and it is, beyond words. So let's listen to it. Here you have the opportunity to hear how Mayor intended for the piece to be performed. This is to drive in the city, it takes ingenuity. To drive in the city, it takes the incomparable agility of the Lexus UX.
May this is synagogue music at its very best. This is a melody we sang at the uh, we sing at PJ. Or everybody at least we did it with, with Rabbi uh, with Tanner Driftman. Everybody every for congregation throughout the world are singing the singing this melody. Let me forget the, the previous popular one you know, thank goodness it's all zim, yeah. Well, that was also very popular. It's still popular too. It's a different kind of a piece, but again, it's um I think May, as I said, Mayer did most of this music Mayer wrote while he was at Sinai Temple. And um, he's a, a true blessing, I think, to, um, to the world of synagogue music. So that's what we got, folks. I hope you enjoyed the session. And um, as I say, I, I, we all feel badly about the pieces that, for whatever reason, I know they all played on my computer at home. So I imagine that if you, if you access them at home, uh, you'll be able to hear the pieces that you weren't able to uh, um, hear over the last couple of weeks. I see somebody got a hand up. Yes, Cantor, I, I may have missed it, and it might be that you're not comfortable having the source sheet sent out, but if you are comfortable, would you ha have either Shaney or can Josh, uh, Rabbi yeah. Josh send it out? Well, sure, he, they've, they've got it. They've got it. They could absolutely send it out. Absolutely. Thank you for this. It was a gift. Thank you. It was, it was my pleasure. I had a lot of fun putting this together. And uh, I don't know, maybe I'll take it on the road. We'll see. Uh, so thank anyway. you. And Yasha Goa. Tia, we look forward to seeing you in Shul. And um, everybody stay well. Stay well, stay healthy. Yeah. Boy, I drove down to Akron today. It was terrible. Terrible. So I just, you know, crazy. Just you know, last year, last summer was COVID. This summer, you know, summer phase. Fortunately, we didn't have these two things going exciting at the same time. Because I had said to my daughter, because my kids are at the Schechter camp, she, I said, "Are they inside today?" She said, "Yeah, they're. They got to be inside." And last year, they had them all outside because of COVID. It's crazy. Well, thank you, Cantor Snyder. Thank you, everybody. Thank next you. week, about Snow Spotlight series for next week, and then you'll see what's coming up next. Thank Everybody you. Good Fourth of July. <laughs>